Hello, in this presentation we will work a comprehensive problem, recording journal entries in the general journal over here, posting those journal entries then to the general ledger, and then using the general ledger in order to create the trial balance. This will be similar to worksheet problems we have worked in the past, however this time we will be focusing in on transactions by date rather than by cycle. In the past, we focused on transactions related to cash, then transactions related to accounts receivable or the sales cycle, then transactions related to accounts payable or the purchases cycle. In this case, we're just going to go through the transactions by date and not focus on any particular cycle. In so doing, we're going to have some more activity we're going to have to work on and focus in on at any given time. We're going to have to work through this Excel sheet and try to figure out how best to manipulate this Excel sheet. It looks pretty intimidating at first glance, but it's not too bad once we focus in on one thing at a time and uh, work through that. Uh, the data is going to be down here, so we're going to put the activities of this data into the journal entries, then posting them to the general ledger, which will then populate the trial balance. First thing we're going to do is hide some of these cells. What we're going to work in is this worksheet first. And I want to have this as easy as possible to move around. And in order to do that, we'll just practice how to, how to set things up in Excel. And one way is to hide these at first. I don't need this extra sheet right here. So I'm going to hide that so I can see this sheet right next to the data that we will be working with. In order to do that, you want to put your cursor on the F up here. We'll put it on the E, this, this small E. We'll put it right there on the E. I'm going to highlight that whole column and then highlight all columns from E to I. Let go. Then you have that highlighted area. And remember, it's the whole column, not just part of the column. We had to highlight the whole thing. And then right click in the highlighted area and we're going to hide those cells. So now we're working in just the cells to the, to the left, this sheet, this general journal where we will then post or record or journalize the journal entries. So the first activity happens on 5-3 and it says we receive cash from clients for advance payment for services that will be provided in the future. Record as unearned revenue. So we're going to record this transaction. We did work and we're, we're going to receive payment for work we're going to do in the future. So that's going to be on 5-3. So I'm going to put the date here in cell A5. And I'm just going to put 5-3. It's going to format it with a date format in the month and then the day. And first question we're going to say, is cash affected? And in this case, we're going to say, yes, cash is affected. We received cash. And that's going to be the key term, of course, seeing received cash. So if we know nothing else, we know that cash has been received. Cash has a debit balance represented by the fact that it does not have brackets. We need to make it go up. So we're going to do the same thing to it, which is a debit. So I'm here in K5, the cell K5. I'm going to right click on that cell and copy. We're going to put that in cell B5, right click and paste one, two, three. The amount then will be, if we scroll back down, 4,000. So we're going to put 4,000 here. I'm going to credit something for 4,000. I could put a negative 4,000, but I'm going to use a formula, which is negative, and then point to this 4,000 here. It'll take that 4,000, multiply times negative one, flipping the sign to a credit of 4,000. Then we just need to know what this account needs to be. And you would think that if we got cash from a client, it would be revenue. But in this case, what this long thing is trying to say is we receive payment in advance for services that will be provided in the future. So we, we haven't done the work yet in essence, and therefore we cannot record the revenue under the revenue recognition principle until work has been done and therefore must be recording this to unearned fees. Unearned fees, we can see is in the liability section. I'm gonna copy that. We're gonna put that up here in B6, right click and paste one, two, three. We're then gonna double click right before the U and space three times. So we have that. Now we already know that we're gonna credit the unearned fees because we debited cash. That's why we think of cash first. But if we think through that, we're gonna say, hmm, unearned fees looks like it's in the liability section of the trial balance as it's close to other liability accounts. It has a credit balance represented by the fact that it has brackets and the unearned fees needs to go up. Why? 
because we owe something in the future, not money necessarily, but work is due in the future. Therefore, we're going to have to increase it by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another credit. Remember that this is the journal entry that we have just recorded in the process of journalizing the journal entry in the general journal. Now we're going to post this journal entry to the general ledger over here, starting with cash. So cash is here. It's the first account on the trial balance, first account on the general ledger. We're going to be on the debit side and we'll be in cell N9. Highly recommend using formulas here. You could type in 4,000, but if you have a problem, it'll be much more difficult to find that problem if you just type it in there. What we want to do is tie everything together. We're going to say equals, then point to this 4,000. Once we select enter, this will go up by 4,000. That balance will then be in this cell here, and we will be out of balance by 4,000 down here, and enter. So we're up to 26,100, 26,100 here, 26 or 4,000 out of balance here. Now we will post the other side, unearned fees. Here is unearned fees here. If we scroll down to the trial balance, it's way down here, unearned fees. We want to have this account. It's, it's going to be the last uh, liability account, last orange account. It'll be in the same order on the general ledger. So we have assets here. We then have liabilities. So we're looking for that last liability account. Here it is. Now, of course, we can see that when we're down here in the liability section, we can't really see the journal entry. We could record this and just hit the equal sign and scroll back over. We're going to try to show some other techniques that you can use. We do really want to use formulas. So a few ways you can do that. You can try to memorize the cell and put equals and memorize the cell there. Or you can say equals and scroll back over and find it, which works quite well. But I'm going to try to show you this technique just so we can see more of the screen at one time. And that technique is just to be the free, it's called freeze the frames. In order to do that, you want to go to the home tab or you want to go to the views tab up top, views tab, and you're going to go to this uh, window here. Now, in order to freeze these frames, you want to make sure what I'm trying to do is freeze the cells B through D so that anytime I scroll over this way, I still see those cells here so that when I get over there, I can see this activity at the same time as seeing part of the general ledger and then post those out at the same time. In order to do that, you want to be right here on J1. So you have to be here when freezing the frames if you're going to do this. So you're going to go to the View tab. Then you're going to go to the Windows group and then Freeze Frames. And you want to freeze the frames here. So when you do that, what will happen is if you if you scroll this way, then you'll see that these cells A through A, A through D are always still there. And that means we can always see the journal entries no matter where we go. So if we, if we use that function then, and I want to record something to the unearned fees, then I can just scroll over to unearned fees. It's going to be these orange accounts. Note that it's a little, you know, confusing at first to see it goes A, B, C, D, X, because the cells are freezed. But we're going to be down here, and I'm still have to scroll down a bit. So we might also want to minimize the screen a bit. I'm at 130. I'm going to bring it down to maybe uh, 100 and... 100 is pretty close so then we want a credit here and so we want a credit here so i'm in cell aa24 so we have to manipulate notice this excel sheet it's not too bad you can do it in a lot of different formats but we got to manipulate this excel sheet a bit within aa24 i'm going to say that equals scroll up just a bit and point to that 4000 and that's going to increase this 2500 by the 4000 to 6500 we're gonna make the screen big again, back to 130. That 6,500 should also be reported here on the trial balance and put us back in balance down here. All right, let's see the next transaction. We're saying 5-5, five, five. receive cash from clients for work done in the past and recorded as accounts receivable. So 5-5, five, five. I'm gonna skip a line and put 5-5 five, five in here. And we're gonna say, is cash affected? And of course, the first part, part of that is received cash. So we're going to say cash is affected. Cash has a debit balance represented by the fact that it does not have brackets. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So I'm going to copy cash in K5, right click and copy. We're going to put that in cell B8, right click and paste one, two, three. 
The amount then is going to be this 3,100. So we're going to put 3,100 on the debit side, 3,100. We're going to credit something for 3,100. I'm going to do that with a formula, negative of that number and enter. So now we just need to know what we are going to credit. You would think that if we got cash, we would credit revenue. But in this case, it says receive cash from clients for work done in the past. So we have to just know that work was done in the past and we must then have recorded revenue when the work was done in accordance with the revenue recognition principle. And now we have this account called accounts receivable, which we now need to decrease by the amount of payment we have received. So accounts receivable is K6. I'm going to right click that. I'm going to put that underneath in B9. Right click and paste one, two, three. Then I'm going to double click. We're going to double click before the A and add three spaces for that indentation. Now we already know that we're going to credit accounts payable because we debited cash and we need to credit something. But we also want to check that. We know that accounts payable is an asset account, has a debit balance, therefore, and we need to make it go down. This account representing people owing us money after they have paid us then that account needs to go down and therefore we're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it which is a credit so we're going to post the cash first to the general ledger so here's the cash first item on the trial balance first item on the general ledger we want it on the debit side we're going to go to the next transaction line in cell n10 say equals and point to that 3100 and enter Next one, we got accounts receivable. It's going to be nice and easy. It's right next to the uh, cash. So it's going to be our second transaction. In essence, we got a better asset and lost the worser asset in, in one sense. So accounts receivable is going to be right here. It's in cell uh, let's see, S9. So this is the accounts receivable general ledger. We are doing the act of posting. We're on the credit side. S9 equals and point to that 3,100 and enter so that brings this balance down we're now left with just 300 that 300 is on the trial balance as well and we are back in balance no effect on net income from either of these two transactions as of yet next transaction says paid cash for miscellaneous expense five nine so i'm going to say five nine skip a line five dash nine and first question is cash affected we're going to say yes, it is affected. It's affected. It says paid, therefore it's going down. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it as its normal balance. Cash having a normal balance of a debit, the opposite then being a credit, therefore we will credit cash. Copy and cash. We're going to put that on the bottom. So here's the date. I'm going to be on the bottom of the date. Right click, paste, one, two, three. Then we're going to double click right before the C indent three times put the dollar amount in the credit side in d12 that amount in this case four hundred dollars so we're going to put negative four hundred dollars then we're going to debit something i'm going to do that with a formula by saying negative of that number and now we just need to know what we should be debiting in five nine we said that we paid for miscellaneous expense so that's going to be down here on the expense side. Miscellaneous often being on the bottom because it's kind of like that catch-all thing. So we typically put it on the bottom. So it's in K23. I'm going to copy that. We're going to put that on the top of our journal entry in cell B11. Right click and paste 123. Now we just need to post this out. Now note that we already knew that we were going to debit the expense because we credited the cash. But we also know that all expenses have debit normal balances and they only go up in the debit direction. Therefore, we do the same thing to it, which is another debit. Now we're going to post this. Now note that this miscellaneous expense is the last account on the trial balance and therefore the last account on the general ledger. If we have freezed the panes, we can, we can go over and find that. So note that we have the assets first and then the liabilities and then the equity and then the revenue and expenses and we're way down here in the last expense in cell al 21. now if you freeze the panes it's nice because you can be over here in al 21 and we are on the debit side and just say equals and point to that 400 all on the same screen 
Once we select enter, it will increase this amount here. There's the 400. It'll also pull that over to the trial balance over here. It'll put us out of balance by 400 and net income is now at a loss because revenue minus expenses means that we have debits winning and no revenue. And so that means we're at a loss. Now we're going to record the other side, the cash side. Cash has a credit here. First account on the trial balance, first account on the general ledger. We're going to go to the next line, credit side, right here in 011, and say that that equals, then point to this $400. That's going to bring this balance down by $400 to 28800 That same number here in the cash item, and that puts us back in balance on the trial balance. Next we have 513 paid vendor for part of debt incurred in the prior month recorded as accounts receivable. So 513, we're going to be right here, skip a line, 513, first question, is cash affected? We're going to say yes, keyword being paid, so we see paid, so we're going to say cash is going down, cash has a debit balance, in order to make something go down we do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. So we're going to credit cash. I'm going to copy cash. I'm going to put it on the bottom. Here's the date. It's going to go on the bottom of the date. Right click and paste. One, two, three. I'm going to double click right before the C. Indent three times. And then we're looking for that amount. So on 513, it's $500. So we're going to put right here 500 in D15. Negative 500 for the credit. We're going to debit something for 500. I'm going to put that with a negative of this number, 500. Now we just need to know what that amount should be. So if we look at 513 paid vendor for part of the debt incurred in the prior month. So we're paying off a debt that was incurred in the prior month and it actually tells us that it's going to be accounts payable. So why did we pay something? We incurred a debt in the prior month. We probably purchased an expense or some kind of asset on account and now we're paying off the on account the on account account being accounts payable. So we're paying off what is owed for some transaction that happened in the past. A liability then is going down. So I'm copying accounts payable. We're going to put that in cell B14. Right click and paste 123. So here's our journal entry. We already know that we're going to debit accounts payable because we credited cash. But if we think through it, accounts payable is a liability account. It has a credit balance represented by the brackets. It needs to go down because accounts payable represents what is owed to us. And this transaction represents somebody paying us. And therefore, the amount owed to us must go down. So we will do the opposite thing to it as its normal balance, which is a debit. When recording this, we'll record the payable first. It's going to be the first orange account. It's in this order, all the assets and then accounts payable, the liability. Same order over here on the GL, so here's all the assets. And then here's the liability. Remember, we, freezed the, we froze the screen, not freezed it, we froze it. And therefore, we're going to be over here, and it may look a little funny, but we're over here in accounts payable. And we are on the debit side. We're in cell Z9. That's going to equal this 500 on the debit. That's a credit. This will be a debit. This will then go down to 300. Scrolling back over to our trial balance, we see that 300 here. We see that we are out of balance by 500. Scrolling back up, we then have cash, which has a credit of 500. That's our first account here. It will be our first account here. We're on the credit side. So here we are in 012 equals, and we're going to point to this 500. That's going to bring this balance down by 500 to 28300 which we then see here on the trial balance and we see that we are back in balance here no effect on net income just that $400 from the prior transaction next transaction we've got on 516 paid employee for salary incurred $800 on 516 so I'm going to skip line 516 and the first question obviously is cash affected we're going to say yes, keyword paid, paid employees, therefore cash is going down. So how do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it as its normal balance. Normal balance here, debit, opposite, then credit. We will then credit cash. 
copy cache. I'm going to put that on the bottom. Here's the date. We're going to be on the bottom of that. Right click, paste, one, two, three. Then we're going to double click before the C, indent three times, put the dollar amount on the credit side, that dollar amount of $800 in this case. So we're going to say 800 credit negative 800. We're going to put a debit of something for 800 negative of that number, just flipping the sign. What should that account be? We paid employees. If we look through our, our trial balance, which I always recommend having available, we see salaries expense. That sounds like it could be something related to payroll. So I'm going to say that's the one. We're going to copy salaries expense, put that on the top, right click in B17, paste one, two, three. Now we already know that we're going to debit the salaries expense because we credited cash, but we always want to double check it and say, well, salaries expense is an expense. All expenses have debit balances. They only go up in the debit direction. Therefore, we will do the same thing to it as its normal balance. That is a debit. We're then going to post this. So this recorded journal entry will now be posted and it's going to be in order again. So we've got assets, liabilities, equity, revenue and expenses. It's going to be way down here then. So we're going to be way over in the same section on the GL. So we have assets on the GL. We've got liabilities. We've got revenue. We've got expenses. We're way down here in the salaries expense. We have a debit here. We're going to be in the salaries on the debit side right here in AH9. We're going to say that that equals and then point to this 800. That's going to bring this up by 800. That same 800, if we scroll back over, will then be represented here and we will be out of balance by 800. We're then going to credit the cash for 800. Cash is our first account here. It's our first account here. We then will record the credit on the credit side here. Next line down in cell 013. We're going to say that equals and then point to this 800. So we've got the 28,300. We'll go down by 800 to 27,500. That then will be represented on the trial balance as well and we will be back in balance here. We note that net income also went down by that 8,000, meaning there's no revenue left. So there are no credits and the debits are winning on the income statement, meaning there's more debits than credits or more expenses than revenue. So this is actually a loss because the non-bracketed numbers represent debits and we don't have any bracketed numbers. We will later, and this will make more sense once we get some revenue to see how the calculation is working, but until that happens, we just have a, a loss for the month of $1,200. Next transaction, 517. We're going to say cash received from client for revenue earned. That, okay, so we're going to have some revenue now. So 517. So next here, we're going to say 517. Is cash affected? We're going to say yes. It says cash was received, keyword received. Cash has a debit balance. How do we make it to go up for being received? We do the same thing to it as its normal balance, which is another debit. So what we're going to do is debit cash. I'm going to copy cash in K5, right click and copy. We will then scroll down to cell B20, right click and paste one, two, three. Dollar amount on the debit side will be we received cash of 7,100, 7,100. We're going to credit something for 7,100. I'm going to represent that with a negative of that number. Then we just need to know what this amount should be or what this account should be. And it says here that uh, we received cash from client for service earned during the month. So we're going to basically say this is done at the same time. We earned the service at the same time or within the same month that we did uh, that we got the cash and therefore we're going to record revenue at the time that we have earned it this point in time so we're going to copy revenue or income that's going to be in b21 right click and paste one two three we'll then double click before the r space three times and there we have that so now we're going to go ahead and record this out note that we already knew that we were going to credit revenue because we debited cash but if we think through it we're going to say, well, revenue has a normal credit balance. Revenue only goes up. Clients pay us. We don't pay clients or customers pay us. We don't pay customers. 
and therefore we make revenue go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another credit. Notice that this is our, kind of our favorite journal entry and both sides are good. There's nothing bad about this journal entry. We received cash and we earned revenue and we need a debit and a credit and there, that's why the debits and credits aren't inherently good or bad. There's nothing bad about either side of this and we need a debit and a credit. So the assets are going up with a debit and the revenue is going up with a credit, both sides being good. So we're going to say first posting the cash. That's our first account on the trial balance, first account on the general ledger. We will then be on the debit side in cell N14. So within N14 equals point to this 7,100. That will bring this balance up by 7,100. Put that number on the trial balance, put us out of balance by 7,100. So there we have that, we're at 34,600. 34,600 then here, we are out of balance by 7,100. Now we're gonna post the credit side. So here's the revenue. Here's the revenue here. Note that it goes assets, liabilities, equity, then revenue. It's gonna be the same order when we look at the general ledger. So we're scrolling over assets, liabilities, equity, and then revenue. So we are here in the revenue account on the credit side in cell AE19. AE19, we're gonna say that equals and point to the cell way over here on uh, D21 and remember we free we froze the screen so that we have these um, These cells that are always going to scroll over if you don't remember how to do that or you didn't see that uh, go back to the prior Point in the video to, to find it. Uh, we just went to the view tab and Froze the screen, but you got to be in the right cell to do that So uh, go back and check that out <laughs> if you want to uh, freeze the screen You don't have to freeze the screen. You could do this in other other ways as well, but there's going to be that. We're going to see that same 7,100 here. And if we calculate net income, then we see that it is calculated as 7,100 credit minus the debits, meaning we have income now. This bracketed number not representing a loss, but representing the fact that the credits are greater than the debits by 5,900, giving us net income of 5,900. We are also, of course, back in balance. Next transaction, we're going to be down here on 521 where it says purchase of supplies on account, no cash paid. So 520, purchase supplies on account. So we're going to be here. I'm going to say on A23, uh, we're going to say 5 21. Correct? 520. I got to 520. And we're going to say first, is cash affected? We're going to say yes, the keyword there being paid. So I'm sorry, purchase supplies it doesn't say paid. We say purchase supplies on account and therefore no paid of the cash and on account is the key term. So we have not yet paid cash. We purchased it on account. So what is affected? Not cash. We purchased it with a payable, but it might be easier for us to think not of the payable, but what we received in order to know what the debits and credits are we received supplies, supplies up here in the assets section. We know that assets have our debit balance accounts. We know that it's going up because we bought more supplies and therefore we can do the same thing to it as its normal balance. Again, it might be easier for us to think of supplies in terms of does it get debited or credited than the payable and then figure out what happens to the payable. That's the, that's the order I would recommend. So I'm gonna copy the supplies. We're gonna put that on top in B23 right click and paste one two three the amount then uh seven thousand five hundred so i'm going to scroll back up here we're going to put seven thousand five hundred and then we're going to credit something for seven thousand five hundred then we know that that credit will not be cash it's going to be something other than cash and of course it will be accounts payable so accounts payable we're going to copy that in cell k12 right click and copy going to scroll back down we're going to put that in cell b24 right click and paste one two three we're then going to double click in front of the a indent three times and there we have that now we're going to post the supplies supplies is going to be the what is it the third account here so it's going to be the third account here so here's supplies and we need i'm going to scroll over just a tad we need a debit to supplies. So debit to supplies in cell R20. R20, 
equals this 7,500. Once we select enter, we'll increase this amount by 7,500 to 8,850. That amount showing here on the trial balance and putting us out of balance by 7,500. We're then gonna record the uh, liability, 7,500. So here it is here, first liability account. We're gonna scroll over, it's in terms of assets and then liabilities, same order. We're over here on accounts payable. Now we can't see these two at the same time. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna make it go down 120 and how about there 110. So we're recording this liability over here in cell AA10. So I'm in cell AA10. I'm gonna say that equals and then point to this 7,500. That's gonna bring this amount up to 7,800. If we make this a bit larger again, back up to 130, scroll back over, we're gonna see that that amount is here, 7,800, and we can see that we're back in balance from that transaction.